All right, we're in the Q and A section, Tico. Hi, Token Team. You're on the Token Team now. Hey. What's up? I've got my first work trip coming up. Just okay. me. She's a 23 year old girl plus okay. five guys. Hmm. Any advice for traveling for work in general, traveling with only men, or traveling internationally where I don't speak the language, especially in a business and technical sense? What's your advice, Tico? Um, don't get too drunk because I know you have a crush on one of those five guys. So one person's going to get picked because you're the only girl on the trip. Like, <laughs> you're going to get smashed. So just definitely don't drink too much. Okay? I agree Work with this. Focus on business That's and work. Advice. And, you know, just keep it friendly with them. Because, you know, on trips with the alcohol, anything can happen. Yeah, I you know agree. What I'm yep. So the, my advice would be stay be focused. Yeah, be be professional, stay focused, do what you got to do because you came out there with an objective and just get it done. Yep, I agree. I used yep. to travel a lot for work internationally yeah. oh, when awesome. I was about this woman's age. Okay. And in, in I was working in Japan and um, I. I think there's just a stereotype that Western women were sluts. So mm. what I would say is it sucks, but there's kind of a stereotype that you're sleeping with one of the five guys that you're <laughs> with or that you're somehow going to do something wrong. So you got to be super professional. Exactly. Got to be very confident. Exactly. You got to pack sensibly. Exactly. You got to pretty much become one of the guys while still being a woman. Yep. It's but have of... your standard and have exactly. your boundaries. Exactly. And then be confident that you're going to rock your business trip, right? That's it. Okay. All right. So we have we a, video a video now. from Jen Hubs. So I really like my job, but I am stretched really, really thin. I'm in e-commerce marketing and I work at three different brands doing all kinds of marketing. And it's to the point where I physically can't handle it all without dropping balls in one area. And I think it's starting to not feel eff effective or efficient. So I'm looking for advice on how do I have a conversation with my boss to say, hey, I appreciate you giving me these things because you trust me, but at the same time, like this isn't one person can't do this. I relate to this question. All right, Tico, I relate to this what do you question. have to say to Jen? Um, First of all, thank you to Jen for sending us a video. Yes, thank you, Jen, for wanting our opinion and our advice on something, you know, so serious like that. We appreciate that 100% because obviously that means that you care about our opinion. Um, I would say that, you know, communication, you have to open, you have to have an open communication with your boss. Like, Whatever, because at the end of the day, they want you to be the best employee possible. So it doesn't matter. You know, we, we, we think that you can, we give you the work because we think that you can do it. And if you, you know, if there's a problem, you can't be mad that you're sitting there all thumbed up and all sad by yourself and nobody knows. Because all your bosses, whenever you give them, you know, they give you work, you're like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. You know, just be like, hey, can I talk to you for five, you know, just one minute real quick. Can I talk to you about what's going on? Because, you know, mental health is very important. And having that self-care thing is very important. And having that energy to do outside of work and the money that you make is very important. So you got to make sure that you put those priorities up. If it's affecting your mental health to the point that you're really stressed out and you're talking to us about it, talk to your boss about it. I guarantee they love you and they're here to support you. And whatever you got to do, even if it's a little steps, it's going to be the steps towards your mental health getting better. And you, and maybe, you know, don't take on so much of a workload because you can't be mad about you got a big workload if you took it all on. So, you know, it's OK to say no sometimes, you know, it's OK. If it's for your mental health, then do it. You know? Chico, best answer yes, ever. Thank you so much. Chico. Let's go. That was an amazing answer. Thank you. Way to go, girl. Thank you so much, Erica. You so great thank that you. was great advice thank that was you. so well put thank you all right my only other advice i thought that was perfect tico okay. so i don't have anything <laughs> to really say but the only thing i would add mm -hmm. is one you should hit me up for a job because she sounds so amazing like what, what a heart yeah um yeah. what a heart the second thing yeah. is sometimes bosses don't really have a handle on how much they've given you like exactly it's like there's this whole there's this phrase like if you need something done give it to a busy person clearly mm. jen is a busy person but exactly. that she gets shit done mm -hmm. and clearly she's sacrificing herself to do it yep. so my only advice on top of what tico said is to when you go have the meeting with your boss which you mm. need to have <laughs> is to quantify all that you're doing not in a way of like oh look at me i work so hard oh exactly. i'm so great jen's great exactly. but really quantify hey 
hey, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to grow these five brands mm-hmm. to from this amount of money to that amount of money. Exactly. This is what it takes to mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Here are two suggestions for how we could be more efficient in yes. what we do. Yes. And here's a recommendation that I have in terms of how we can restructure ourselves exactly. so that we can get more done. Exactly. I think one of the shitty things sometimes is that bosses really don't care Mm -hmm. about how you feel personally yeah and they're not going to be motivated by that they don't want to lose you they they want to be happy but let's face it the reason jen's getting all the projects is jen's better than everybody else that's a fact so jen should should make a recommendation about how jen has a bigger team she has more responsibility exactly and she should show leadership in how she could create a better product for the company and create a better better strategy a hundred percent well that was a really great answer I, i agree i believe it be very professional when you talk to your bosses and just yeah, have get organized, a, don't yeah, cry. have a solution base. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this is what we can do. This is what I can do to help the company and help myself. Yep. All right. So last question we have is from Lorenzo, the producer of this podcast. Shout out Lorenzo. We love Shout Lorenzo. Out Lorenzo. He's a man, Should but we're we gonna a give a shout out Lorenzo. Shout out Lorenzo. Shout out All right. Lorenzo too. wants to know where we think the biggest growth and areas of opportunity are for content in the digital space. Wow. That's a lofty question. Wow. Really nebulous. Wow. Okay. Here's my two cents of where content is going in the digital space. Okay. So in my opinion, media used to be about really two things. It was about the format. Uh, was it on the radio? Was it audio like you only talked? Or was it video? Mm-hmm. And then the second piece is where content was distributed. So it was about format and distribution. So video was distributed on television, right? Cable or broadcast. Radio was distributed on the radio. And then the internet showed up and like blew that whole fucking thing to pieces. And content kind of became anything and everything everywhere. And what I think the future of content is, is that basically it's not going to be audio or video or social. It's going to, all of those things are going to bleed together in one. You got to think about how can your content be as interactive as possible, as viral as possible, so that people carry it forward for you. And that's what I think the future is. So I think Mm. content creators who are thinking about format and a single source of distribution are pretty much screwed. You've got to be constantly thinking about audio. You got to think about video. You got to think about social. You have to think about chat. You have to think about texts and tweets, all those things together. You got to just be like constantly creating. Exactly. And I think that's what the future looks like.